Thalia? Thalia, yes. Yeah, real nice to meet you. Good to meet yeah. you. Um, you said in a 2019 interview, shortly after announcing you would not run for re-election to mm -hmm. Congress, that you were interested in helping other candidates like you, yeah. and that you want to see a Republican Party that has more folks that look and sound and operate like mm -hmm. you do. What actions have you taken towards that since? Sure. And what should the Republican Party be doing or not doing as a whole to in um, sure. increase diversity and inclusion? Sure. Um, so one of, the, one of the vehicles I was able to do that, I had an outside initiative called Future Leaders Fund. And basically, uh, we raise money for other candidates. Um, candidates like Wesley Hunt in Houston, um, um, uh, uh, Ashley in, in Iowa, um, Mrs. Uh, Maliakis in New York. And so there's, a, there's been a group of candidates um, that I've, I've helped uh, through this initiative in order to prepare them for, uh, to win, right? Because, because look, nobody thought in 2009 that a black Republican was going to win in a 72% Latino district. Nobody thought I had a chance. Now, I, I won the first round. I won the primary. But I didn't get 50% of the vote, and it went to a runoff. And I lost the runoff by 700 votes. And you all know that, that's not a lot. I'm glad I don't want to tell that story anymore, but, but, I, but I will. Um, I made a strategic and a tactical error, uh, but then I came back in 2014 and won. And how did I win? I showed up to places that people didn't expect me to be. I, you know what, and, and look, I went to, and there's a, there's a town, Eagle Pass is in the, is in the news today. Um, I, I went to a, a tardiata in, in Eagle Pass. It's an afternoon party. And when I walked in about 400 people, the band stops before me. And I had 75 people come up to me. And I know it was actually 75 because the person that was with me counted. And all 75 of them said and asked, why are you here? Now, Professional political consultants told me how to answer that question and what they thought I should answer, but my response was real simple, because I like to drink beer and eat barbecue too. Right, and everybody laughed. Second time I showed up to Eagle Pass, people would shake my hand. Third time I would show up, people would walk by and be like, I'm a Republican. Right? Fourth time they told me their problem, fifth time I, I solved that problem, and that's how I grew. And, and that district now is, a, is an overwhelmingly uh, Republican district. So this is what we need to do, right? The, the days are over. It's not the 80s anymore. You can't say one thing in a primary and something else in a general election. And the three largest growing groups of voters in the United States of America are women with a college degree who live in the suburbs, um, people you know, that from communities of color, and people under the age of 35. These are, we need to be talking to these folks in order to make sure we win and, and, and stop this trend. Seven out of eight, eight out of nine, seven out of eight um, uh, last national elections Republicans have lost. We have an opportunity, right? And, 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 and the way we, we seize this opportunity is by talking to everybody. And guess what, it's hard. Okay, the professional political class tells you to talk to people that are likely voters. The most way you know it's a likely voter is it somebody who's voted at four out of the last four times, right? Like, this is what perpetuates the cycle. And when everybody is like, what the heck? I want something different, right? So we got to try things a, a little bit differently. And so that's what I've been, been, been trying to do. Um, and I also talk about some of these issues to say, hey, guess what? You know, people appreciate these things and give it as a model for folks. So that's how we've been helping to, to rebuild that. And, and look, um, this candidacy is part of that too. I'm going to places that a lot of Republicans don't go, right? And, and convince me. It's easy to preach to the choir. We got to grow the choir. And that's what we need to do. And, and if the GOP does that, guess what? We're going to see smashing success in 2024, we're going to see not just two years of conservative leadership, we're going to see 16 years of conservative leadership. And that's the message that I'm trying to bring, uh, not only with my candidacy, because it's winning, it, it can win, by the way, but with other folks. So sorry, I went on a little too long. Thank that's, you. Yeah.